Last week we did self-sanctification in Caduceus, right? It's how you w reach this very, very high level. And by the way, those people who have not seen, are not been part of this class up until now, mm -hmm. can look back uh, on Kosher Tube and see the shears mm -hmm. that went before and follow in the book as we're doing it, because okay. we are following it chapter to verse, literally. Oh. Um, and so um, we're, gonna, we're up to um, 15. Okay. Right. right. Okay. So 15 begins with a verse uh, from Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus, right? Mm -hmm. And the verse is Lusisra uh, es avicha, right? That you shouldn't hate your brother in your heart. Mm -hmm. right? that, that's the statement, right? It's, it doesn't say you shouldn't hate your brother, it says you shouldn't hate your brother in your heart. Mm -hmm. right? Hatred is the feeling that the existence of any being is a hindrance to our own existence. And that the destruction of that being would make our own existence more complete. It's a very interesting, yeah, respect. interesting way of saying it. In other words, it means that we do not feel ourselves whole so long as this, this or that still exists. Now, there's a very famous example of this. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it is? Anyone know what it is? A famous example of this? Yeah. Of, of that one person couldn't stand that someone else existed? Yeah. Hitler? No, I know. That's good, too. Hitler, I wouldn't think of Hitler. Um, um, oh, boy. Um, an ancestor of Hitler. Uh, an ancestor of Hitler. Yeah. Or maybe one of the Caesars. Whatever. Haman? Haman? You got it. Right. Who? Haman. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He so could, Haman couldn't, Haman couldn't stand the, the fact that You know, there Mordecai was Mordecai, mm. right? He wouldn't bow to him, mm. right? Yeah, he didn't right. say anything to him, right? He actually, it wasn't that he wouldn't bow to him. He didn't acknowledge his presence, right? Yeah. When Haman goes home, he tells the wife, he says, I can't have any pleasure in this world. I'm the most powerful man in Persia. <laughs> his whole life is ruined right? because one man. I'm the wealthiest man in the world. Uh -huh. More wealthy than the king himself, yeah. right? Uh -huh. I'm, the mo I'm probably the most powerful man, right? The king is the figurehead, but I'm running the country, uh -huh. right? Right? And when I see that man, my life is ruined. I have no whoa, satisfaction, whoa, whoa, whoa. right? Because that Jew exists, yeah. right? <laughs> one person. And by the way, you were right as well with, with Hitler Machimo. His name should be erased, mm -hmm. right? Because in Mein Kampf, he writes a horrible book. But, you know, when an anti-Semite spouts his filth, mm -hmm. We should never think that it's just for the street. Mm -hmm. He means it. Mm -hmm. And we should know that he means it. Mm -hmm. right? And we should defend ourselves from it. Mm -hmm. Same with the mini jihad now. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. right? Hitler said if one Jewish boy should survive my plans, it's all for nothing. All for nothing. Mm -hmm. right? And of course, by the way, he's right. Mm -hmm. He's right. The, you know, there's a concept that Amalek mm -hmm. and the Jew at the end of the days cannot, you know, the, 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 the Western, right? There ain't room in this town for the two of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that before the film is over, one of them is going to lie dead in the street. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And that's the one thing we know is we know that Ishmael mm -hmm. and that all the nations eventually will come to understand Mm -hmm. in the time of Shia. You know, godliness in this world, the role that Israel plays in that process. Mm -hmm. right? And that there will be peace in the world, and there will not be war, and that this kind of hatred that exists will be gone. Mm -hmm. One exception, Amalek. Mm -hmm. Now, to the credit of the kindness of some Jewish leaders in the past, including, as I understand it, the, the last Lubavitcher rabbi, he believed that the destruction of Amalek was the destruction of their belief system, mm -hmm. right? of their, that it didn't mean that they all had to be killed. Mm -hmm. But our understanding historically was that, mm -hmm. right? that they could not exist at the same time. And, and the leader of Nazi Germany, his name should be erased from this world, right? understood this. Mm -hmm. right? So this is what Hirsch is saying. Right? Saying, 
we cannot feel whole so long as this is still existing. Mm. This feeling is the death, nay, the complete inversion of the human heart, which God has created for the comprehensive embrace of all beings, but which instead excludes one or all beings to the extent of desiring their non-existence and embraces only itself. In fact, the heart becomes a stone. As soon, therefore, as you perceive hatred springing up in your heart against any being, know for certain that you have failed to attain your proper moral level. Don't look at him. Look at yourself at that moment and know if you're feeling hatred, this is a failure of yourself. Failure of yourself at this point. You know, there's when young people at a certain age, they have clubs in their schools. Right? It happens, right? You know, this club, that club. Right? The club is not about belonging. It's almost always about preventing others from belonging. Yeah, that's mm. right? the other way. You know, yeah. the three of us to make sure you're not part of it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's about hatred. Mm -hmm. It's about exclusion. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a, for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. to diminish another person. Mm -hmm. right. Separation is not necessarily about diminishing, right? You know, Israel should not look at Levi and Levi look, look at Cohen as though he's a superior human being, mm -hmm. you know, but as he has a different responsibility and mission mm -hmm. to fulfill, and mm -hmm. all must fulfill their mission. Everybody has a unique mission. Mm -hmm. It is a sad, it is a sad privilege of man that he is able to love and fondle every creature and yet to hate those of his own species. There's a book written called Hitler's Willing Executioners. Mm. It's a horrendous book. It's a scholarly book. For many, many years there was a theory that it was the Nazi party. It was the SS. It wasn't the German people. It wasn't, it wasn't them. Turns out, it was. The, the policemen, the mailmen, anybody with authority, you know, had bought into the idea that the Jews were not quite human. Mm. Right? And so there are horrendous stories about, you know, locking Jewish children in a building and burning the building down, but first removing the cats <laughs> that they shouldn't suffer. Mm -mm. You know, it's a, it's exactly, I mean, Hirsch is writing a hundred years before mm -hmm. any of this. Which yeah. is really going to happen anyway. Wow. Mm. And, and I don't he think he's writing as a prophet. He's talking he about the nature, the of, nature man. of man. That's yeah. right. He understood. That's right. right. To love and fondle every creature and yet hate those of his own species. Hatred between man and man arises from the fact that one has in fact injured the other with a wrongful word or deed, and so has really endangered his existence, or that he has come to, into a conflict with, in the pursuit of the same objective, and so apparently one seems to frustrate the other. Right. These are the sources that Hirsch gives for why people feel hatred. This feeling should never remain in your heart against any man. By the way, one of the reasons why it emphasizes don't hate the person in your heart is that if, if, you, if you actually read it in context, uh, and look, I'll read the English in context just mm -hmm. for a second if you don't mind. <clears throat> it says, the, the whole paragraph over it says, you shall not be a gossip monger among your people. You shall not stand aside while your fellow's blood is shed. I am God. So don't wound people with gossip, mm -hmm. Russian horror. Right. If you see somebody suffering, mm. right? If you see that you can't stand aside while your fellow's blood is shed. Right? You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall reprove your fellow and do not bear a sin because of him. Right? What does it mean? It means you have a responsibility to set your friend straight. Mm. Your brother straight. Now, this is a very complex issue, mm. right? Because if the result of your reproof is that the person will be more willing, uh, more willingly do something that is rebellious, 
you haven't done anything good. Mm -hmm. If your reproof is because you hate that person, then you're not going to do any good, right? If your reproof is because you love that person and you want to get them on the right track, right? Then you have to think about it very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. Chazal tell us that it's better to correct a person, even though you see a person is doing something absolutely wrong, right? Rather than say, what's that? Mm -hmm. Say, have you ever considered why it is that the Torah says this? You're not even telling them to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. You're asking them a simple question. Have you ever wondered why the Torah says mm -hmm. we shouldn't drive on Shabbos? Huh? Mm -hmm. What you really want to say is, don't drive on Shabbos. Mm -hmm. you know, you're endangering yourself, mm -hmm. right? You're destroying your own Shabbos, your pleasure of Shabbos. You're, you know, you're, you're violating a, a, a law of derisor, right? Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. right? The result of that will probably be he'll just end the conversation with you. Mm -hmm. right? But if you were to say, have you ever wondered why it is that Orthodox Jews don't drive on Sunday, mm -hmm. on Shabbos? Mm -hmm. You know? It reminds me of a funny story. Funny uh, story? Yeah, I heard from um, one of the directors of the OU. He said that he used to send uh, university students in California who were interested in Yiddishkeit, Jews, right, but weren't observant, to observant homes for Shabbos, to experience Shabbos. Right? Mm -hmm. And then after, they, he would ask them how it went. Right? And he would pair people up with, you know, this is, you know, Ruvain, I'm going to send them to the Coins home, and this is Shimon, I'm going to send them to this home, right? And he would pair them up carefully, or the woman up with this family, whatever. Right? And this was actually a very significant part of what he did mm -hmm. in his job. So he sent this young man who was a a guy who really enjoyed partying at the university, right, <laughs> to this home, right? And these are people who really knew how to say L'chaim, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> they were good at it. You know, from the, from the moment of Kabbalah Shabbos, when they're bringing in Shabbos for the first Kiddush, right, to Havdalah, right? They had the finest scotch, mm. and they had beautiful wines. <laughs> the, the oneg of this Shabbos, the joy of the Shabbos, Everybody could appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So comes the next Tuesday, he sees the young man. He said, so, how are your shops? You know. And the man says, um, you know, I still have a lot of questions. But now I understand why it is that Jews don't drive on Shabbos. In any case, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll continue. Um, <coughs> this feeling should never remain in your heart against a man. Mm -hmm. By the way, very often the thing that causes hatred, right, you turn out was not intended. Mm -hmm. So in your rebuke, if it doesn't start out as a harsh thing, you shouldn't do this or you did this to me. Instead, if, you, if you're, you're asking a question, and say, say, you know, uh, I was about to do this and you kind of pushed in front of me and you did it. Why? Mm -hmm. I'm not upset, I'm just kind of, what was on your mind? Mm -hmm. and there's a very good chance a person will say, I didn't notice that you were there. I'm sorry. I guess I was deep in my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. Right? They weren't pushing you out of the way. Mm -hmm. They were just, they were wrong. They weren't considerate. Mm -hmm. right? But it wasn't an attack on you. Mm -hmm. right? You'll never know it unless you are able to have the discussion, mm -hmm. right? the rebuke, in a way that's not seen as an offense. Mm -hmm. The feeling should never remain in your heart against any man. He is, after all, your brother a child of the same God, placed in the world by him with the same claims on life. If you hate him and wish him away, then you hate and wish away the hand of God which has placed your brothers next to you in order that you may esteem them as brothers. We had this conversation when we discussed anger. Mm -hmm. right? You remember is that anger is viewed as a vote of mm -hmm. as, as idol worship. 
as mm -hmm. the worship of something foreign. Right? What is anger? Anger is saying, God didn't set up the world right, and I'm angry. Mm. Right? I should have gotten that, and he got it. Mm -hmm. Right? I shouldn't have missed that bus. Whatever it is. Mm. Right? Right? As if to say, God didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. Right? So as soon as you say God didn't do it right, right then you're, you're like into a world that is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, Abraham did say to, to God, you know, well, how are you going to destroy the city? You can reason with God. Mm -hmm. right? But you can't kind of well, Moshe assume argues that, with him all the time. Moshe yeah. argues with him all the time. But you can't assume that you understand yeah, everything. The, the, the thought process mm -hmm. uh, of the Almighty. Uh, and hatred and anger are an indication that you feel you do. Mm -hmm. If you hate him and wish him away, then you hate and wish away the hand of God, which has placed your brothers next to you, in order that you may esteem them as brothers. Even if he wrongs you, <coughs> do not forget he is your brother. Be sorry that your brother can make such a mistake. Reprove him and forget. Right? We're not allowed to bear a grudge. It's one of the mitzvahs. Is you're not allowed to bear a grudge. It means the example that's given is if I go to Reuben's house and I said to Reuben, uh, can I borrow your lawnmower? <laughs> Mine's broken. And Reuben says to me, uh, you know, uh, I lent it to somebody else. Huh? And you go back to your house and then you notice that later on he's out cutting his grass <laughs> with the lawnmower. <laughs> but he lied to you and he didn't give it to you. Mm -hmm. If two weeks later he comes to you and says, my lawnmower is broken, can I put your lawnmower? You're not allowed to, not only refuse it, you're not allowed to even remember that incident. Mm. You're not allowed to bear a grudge. Mm. It's, that's how much you have to... Now, I'm not saying <laughs> that I'm that person, mm -hmm. but I devoutly wish that I was, mm -hmm. and I'm prepared to work towards that. Mm -hmm. I understand that that's the right goal. Mm -hmm. But consider above all whether it is not altogether a delusion, a falsehood, that the existence of any human being can do harm to your existence, that his destruction is necessary to save you. Is it then your fellow man? Is it you, is it you yourself? Is it he who procures for you the means of existence? Can you do anything more than sow the seed with your industry and await the fructifying, the, 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 the harvesting of the blessing from above? Is it not God who distributes all the means of life, who showers down blessings or curses on the labors of man? And is his hand too weak, his love too niggardly, his to bring into life, to sustain and to give the joy of life to you, to millions more with you? Must he withdraw from you the blessing which he apportions to your brother next to you? And if your brother were eliminated, would not your well-being even then still depend, as it does now, on the same all-ruling providence of God? You're kidding yourself mm -hmm. if you think he's the one who's holding you back. Mm -hmm. You're fooling yourself and you're causing yourself pain and aggravation. Mm -hmm. right? We all feel it in the workplace. We all feel it sometimes even, you know, within our own families, mm -hmm. you know, we, or with our friends, whatever. That person is holding, you know, I feel it in traffic, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that guy is holding me back, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if I just listen to a person and say, he's not holding me back, mm -hmm. you know, whatever the traffic is, mm -hmm. that's what the traffic is and God determined that's what it's going to be, mm -hmm. right? Okay, can I make a move and get into a faster lane, mm -hmm. right? Well, maybe God created a faster lane. It's possible, <laughs> right? But the the stewing of your juices mm. does no good, mm. and in fact, is it, 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 it? Harris is pointing out: is a delusion you're allowing yourself to have to your own detriment. Mm. Ah, if you would but consider that you will obtain, you will still obtain such recognition as God ordains for you, that you will still occupy the place which God assigns to you, that you will still receive the sum of possessions which he determines for you, even though millions more along with you strive for the same thing. 
that if you do not get something, it is not because another competes with you for it, but because God's wise decision has not ordained it for you. Do you not see that the greed for food, honor, or fortune, which, takes you, which makes you hate your brother, is a denial of God? A denial that it is the one and the same God whose love covers all men equally and who, as a supreme ruler, determines the lot of each one? Lay the seed of your own good fortune alongside millions of others and pray to God that they may all come to fruition for the good of all. He is rich enough in love and power to fulfill such an unselfish prayer. Mm-hmm. Right? So, what, what he's saying is that to complain about another's success at your expense is to misunderstand how the world works. Mm-hmm. It's to treat God like a billionaire. right? But God's not a billionaire. God's an infinite heir, mm. <laughs> right? God can give him a billion mm. and give him a billion and him a billion and him a billion and there won't be any inflation, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, there won't be any interest in, in, increase in interest rates. Mm. Right? The chef of God, the flow of God into this world is not, is not a zero-sum gain. It's not if he gets it, I don't get it. Right? There's not a limitation. It's, oops, I'm running out of kindness. Yeah, he ran out. Yeah, we have so much to give. I'm short on cash. Mm. Right? I don't have enough cattle. Right? Mm. This is not a problem for uh, the Almighty. Mm-hmm. Right? Whatever he needs, he has. Mm-hmm. Right? He doesn't. He doesn't even have a need. Mm. Right? He has what what is required in any given situation. Right? Mm-hmm. That you don't have it doesn't mean that it's because your friend has it mm. and there was only two cows left. Mm. There was a billion cows yeah. left, right? But your friend got two and you got none, right? Because that was the intent, mm. right? Whatever the reason, we can talk about what the reasons are many times. By the way, this doesn't give you the right to be lazy mm. because part of the requirement of the contract between us God is that we have six days of work that we have to do, mm-hmm. right? But what we will get at the end of the year is determined on Rosh Hashanah, mm-hmm. our revenue for the year. It's mm-hmm. determined on Rosh Hashanah. Whether it will come through a lottery or through, heaven forbid, health insurance, mm-hmm. you know, or through the, the labor of our hands, right? Mm-hmm. It's impossible to know. But the number mm-hmm. is written down on, the, that, on Rosh Hashanah. Mm-hmm. It's written, it's decided on Rosh Hashanah. That's when it's decided, right? Mm-hmm. So, that you strain and break your head, take time away from learning, from your family, from dominating, because you're going to work so hard. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not going to increase your 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 wealth mm-hmm. at the end of the day. It won't happen. Mm-hmm. Right? It'll increase your stress. Mm-hmm. It won't increase your wealth, <laughs> right? Because that's been predetermined. Yeah. Right? On the other hand, if you decide I'm not going to work this year. Right, you voided the contract to some degree with God, so you shouldn't expect that you're going to get it anyway. Mm-hmm. Some might, mm-hmm. some might, but the, the, there is a social contract involved in this mm-hmm. process. But you say it is sinful; it is the sinful word or deed of your brother, which, like a, a lighted torch thrown into to a building, has shattered your life and fortunes. Shall you not hate him for that? Hate? No. In this, too, pay homage to the providence of God, which high above the comprehension of the human mind makes the very crime of the wicked the punishment and the discipline of the one who is to be improved, the testing exercise of one who is capable of being taught. Could the edifice of your fortunes be shattered if God did not allow it? Could it not equally have been destroyed even if no sinner had furnished his crime at that as the instrument? Accept his suffering, therefore, like any other from the hand of God, and use it for your own improvement and ennoblement. You know, the, the one of the sources that of comfort that people have mm-hmm. at difficult times is reading to him, reading the Psalms of mm-hmm. David. Mm-hmm. Why is it? Because quite frankly, David lived a life of peaks and valleys. Mm-hmm. You know, he had tremendously 
elevated moments and tremendous really low ones. tragedies mm-hmm. that nobody should know. Mm-hmm. You know, from his own family. trying families. to kill him. Yeah, mm-hmm. one thing or another. Mm-hmm. You know, the loss of a child, the, mm-hmm. the rebellion of a child, the death of a child mm-hmm. in rebellion. You know, the the the, the prophecy that blood will never leave your house. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you know, it, there's a story told about Doug uh, because his. His, his, everything was going up and down in the life so much that he said to his young son, create for something that will stabilize my psyche, basically. Shlomo was 11, 12 years old. And I'm sorry, no, he, he went to the crown jeweler right, and said, I need something that will help this help my frame of mind, make it for me. Mm -hmm. Now, David was the most powerful man in the world Mm -hmm. at this point, and certainly in Israel. And he was an absolute monarch. He had to answer the prophets, he had to answer the Sanhedrin, but, you know, there were two sets of courts. There was always two sets of courts in Israel. There was the Sanhedrin, and there was the King's Court. The King's Court had a much lower level of um, evidence required to kill, to kill someone. They didn't need uh, If they were a threat to national security and mm-hmm. it was determined by that by the king, mm-hmm. right? That could be a death sentence. Right? Mm-hmm. So you didn't want to make the king unhappy. Mm-hmm. Here's the jeweler. You know, every time the king walks by the jeweler's place, he's saying, "Has progress? No. Nope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> working on it. Working on it." <laughs> right? And one day, you know, Shlomo sees the young son Solomon sees the jeweler very distraught and said, what, what's wrong? And the Jew said, it's your father. He's asked the impossible. What is it? And he, he tells Shlomo. And Shlomo says, make for him a beautiful ring and engrave on it, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. Later, there came somebody who said, Gamze Yavor, this too is for the good. Right? He was a teacher of Rabbi Akiva. We'll talk about him sometime in the future. This too shall pass. As if to say, this great high moment of joy, understand that there's a leveling process, and this great depression that you have, mm-hmm. this great sadness, sadness, this too will pass. Uh, right? To have an understanding of it, that we should understand these things and take them with a sense that this is part of God's plan. Mm-hmm. When you read Tehillim, you know, when a person is very troubled, often there's a great deal of comfort mm-hmm. in plumbing the, the psychology of King David uh, because he does deal with these issues on a very uh, personal level. And Tehillim really is the inner thoughts of this great king. Mm-hmm. You know, and this this great prophet and this great guide, mm-hmm. he is a, at the end of the day the model of all kings that came after, mm-hmm. um, and he is a king, literally warts and all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those warts are intended to be lessons and lessons of comfort for mm-hmm. us. So it, it's it's why people do turn to to him in, in times of difficulty. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, <coughs> But you say, um, the last chapter than 51. Uh, hate? No. In this, to pay homage to the province of... Uh, okay, we'll go back your, to where you were suggesting. But you say, it is a sinful word or deed of your brother, which, <coughs> uh, which is like a lighted torch thrown into a building, has shattered your life and fortunes. Shall you not hate him for that? Hate? No. In this, too... Pay homage to the providence of God, which high above the comprehension of the human mind makes the very crime of the wicked the punishment and discipline of the one who is to be improved, the testing exercise of the one who is to be capable of being taught. Could the edifice of your fortunes be shattered if God did not allow it? Could it not equally have been destroyed even if no sinner had furnished the crime for the instrument? Accept the suffering, therefore, like any other from the hand of God, and use it for your own improvement and ennoblement. Wait for God, 
who leads from night to morning, from sorrow to joy, from death to life, leave it to God to bring the wicked to account for his wickedness, but do not hate, do not sin through hate. Has, has he sinned against you, reduced your property to ruins? Has he not sinned against God? and laid his sacrilegious hand on the holy things of God. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, if, we are, if the Jews are not prophets, mm -hmm. they are the children of prophets. It says. Mm -hmm. be, be wary how you treat them. Mm -hmm. Hate wickedness, but not the wicked man. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. Mm -hmm. We have a concept that the mitzvahs we do in this world right, are engraved in our neshamas. Graved in unshrooms. They are permanent. Engraved in the spring, engraved in stone. What about the Averis? Are they the same? No. Because man is not a, an individual of original sin. Man is good. Mm -hmm. right? Does he always do good? No. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he does things that are not so good. Mm -hmm. You know, what Sadak has not fallen seven times, or six, seven times and gotten up seven times, mm -hmm. is the expression. So, for sure, but the the metaphor that I've heard from Rabbi Bradowitz and others is that, you know, after a very fancy meal, if you haven't been as careful, or we'll say if your child hasn't been as careful, he has each course on his cloak. <laughs> right? So now you go to the dry cleaner, right? and when you say dry, get the stains out, Many dry cleaners will ask you, well, what is this stain from? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's from chocolate. And what's this? He cut himself. That's from blood. Mm -hmm. right? What's that from? That's from wine. Mm -hmm. And that's from ice cream. Mm -hmm. And they'll tag. You'll see that they put little stickers on each of the stains. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they do it is because different stains require different chemicals to, be, to remove the stain. Mm -hmm. right? You know, when we take our clothes, we just throw them in the washing machine. Yeah. Dry cleaners will apply a certain kind of stain remover for wine mm -hmm. that they wouldn't use for chocolate. They'd mm -hmm. use something else for chocolate. So this is what Gehenna is. Mm -hmm. Is these averas that we have are like stains on our neshamas, on mm -hmm. our souls. Right? And when we go to Gehenna, to, we're going to the dry cleaner. Mm -hmm. right? Now it's nice if you have just one stain. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. And uh, Easy clean you know, up. It, you, it's removed and off you go to your place in Gan Eden and you're sparkling. Right? Mm -hmm. But some of us may have many, many mm -hmm. stains. And the, the process of all those chemicals being used, you know, is not so pleasant. Mm -hmm. But the good news is it's not engraved in our neshama. Mm -hmm. It's on the outside. Mm -hmm. right? So eventually it can come off. Come on. Right? It's not part of us. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Hate the wickedness, but not the wicked one. Hate the sin, but not the sinner. Only where a wicked man has so identified himself with wickedness that he is to you the very source of wickedness, where it is difficult to separate the wicked man from wickedness, him you may hate, for you hate only the wickedness in him. Such a one is the criminal whom you regard as beyond redemption, as one who does evil consciously and deliberately of whose incorrigibility and premeditation you have convinced yourself through repeated and fruitless warnings and admonition. Worst of all, it is the seducer who is not only wicked himself, but sows the seed of wickedness in others and brings it to maturity, who sets himself to kill morality and godliness in the soul of even one man, nay, who makes this his only object. Such a one as the all-loving God himself excluded from the love and the piety of the human heart. Such a one you may not love, for in him you love sin itself, the agent of which he has made himself. So at the end, Hirsch says, there is a place for hatred. Mm -hmm. He says, you need to hate the sin. But if you've determined, and not through an emotional process, but through an ana analytical process, that the person has become the sin itself. Mm -hmm. That the person is not sinning because he wants to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. He's not sinning because he wants to be powerful. He's sinning because of the sin, the pleasure of the sin itself, the, 
the value of the sin. And worse than that, and this is a very, very important point to understand, it's a tremendously important point to understand, that we hold that the enabler, the person who encourages the sin, he calls him the seducer here, Mm -hmm. but a kinder word is the enabler, Mm -hmm. somebody who makes it more possible for a person to do something. Is worse. Mm -hmm. Is worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The person who says to you, and knows what he's saying, look, it's not so serious to drive on chops. <laughs> right? mm. It's not so serious to light a fire on chops. Mm. Right? That's what you need to do Go into it. Right? Right? Now that doesn't mean the person has to jump in and say, you're forbidden to do it. Mm-hmm. But to enable you to do it, mm. that's a very serious thing. Mm. And the, the Torah makes very clear mm-hmm. that wickedness mm-hmm is not, doesn't reach its peak until a person is actually leading others into this wickedness. Mm. Right. That's why teaching is to be very careful. Teaching. Yeah. Teaching. Like, and that's why that, that thing in Gitten 57, right? With the, when the, what's his face? The one that, the, the, he was the, his nep, his uncle is, 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 uh, near his Titus and he, he, he wants to convert, uh, he wrote the Onkyos. When Onkyos right. wants to convert, he, he does the necromancy, right? And he talks to the right. dead, the four different people, right? Enemies of the Jews. That's right. a good example of why, yeah. why he's in trouble. That's right. That's right. Bad yeah. teaching, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. And by the way, Shalom Alec does the same. Yeah. You know, you don't consult in that yeah. way. So, it would, you know, there are... Um, there are religions mm-hmm. and there are philosophical systems that say there's no place for hatred. Mm-hmm. Hatred soils the, the, the hater. Mm-hmm. Right? So she never hate. Judaism doesn't say that. Judaism says there's almost no place for hatred. Mm-hmm. But there is a place. Mm-hmm. Right? There is a place where it's permitted. So there's a phrase that you hear you hear a great deal, Sinat Hanat. Right. It's called baseless hatred, mm-hmm. hatred for no reason. Mm-hmm. We say that the second temple is destroyed for the sin. Mm-hmm. Right. And comes Tisha, we always learn the story of Kamsin or Kamsa, mm-hmm. and what it means. Uh, and w- w- we'll get to it at, the, at its appropriate time. But you conclude that uh, you know hatred is a terrible thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Before I end it, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, a small story from Rav Shochet. Once I was learning with Rav Shochet and he said that revenge is forbidden to Jews. Revenge is forbidden revenge to Jews. Is forbidden mm-hmm. to Jews. Mm-hmm. So I was in another with another group of people who were from the same community and the rabbi said, no, no, revenge is forbidden to Jews against Jews, but not against non-Jews. Mm-hmm. You can take revenge against a non-Jew. And I said, with all due respect, mm-hmm. the Mora de Asra, the leader, halakhic leader of this community, has said quite the opposite. Which is that it's forbidden to us. It's, it's, not, it's not true. We're allowed to take revenge against non-Jews. I said, I'll tell you what. Let's meet with the Rav. Mm-hmm. See what he says. Mm-hmm. You know? The person didn't come to the meeting with the Rav, and I apologized to the Rav for getting involved in this kind of, mm-hmm. he said, she said. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I said, I just want to be clear. Mm-hmm. Are we allowed to take revenge against somebody who's not Jewish? He said, absolutely not. He said, more than that, more than that, you can't take revenge against an animal. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, a, a dog bites you, mm-hmm. right? you can't take revenge against it. <laughs> you dog. can train him not to. Not to, mm-hmm. yeah. It's different than revenge. Revenge mm-hmm. involves anger, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Why? Right? Because of what it does to you. It's just, In a way, it's a selfish thing. Mm-hmm. A person who takes vengeance on others mm-hmm. becomes a hateful person. He poisons himself. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's not that you're doing a favor to the Jew, the non-Jew, or the dog, whatever, whoever it is, right? 
you're actually doing a favor to yourself mm -hmm. not to take revenge. Mm -hmm. The idea that, you know, vengeance is mine, say it the Lord, <laughs> you know, is because he can handle it. Yeah. yeah, it's right. God. He doesn't have to worry. It's God. He right. worry about you know, God's yeah. nature won't change yeah. because God. He decides to yeah. uh, take somebody to judgment. Mm -hmm. But you know, we know that when Samuel saw uh, the seventh son of Ishai, young David, he concluded this can't be the, the next king of Israel. He looks like Asa, right? Asa was raidish, right? Asa mm -hmm. was a, a violent killer. Mm -hmm. right? You can't select such a person to be. And God said, you only see the outside. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, he does have a, a, a warlike streak, like Asa. Mm -hmm. But his warlike streak is on behalf of God. Mm -hmm. Asa was against God. Mm. So that they both are reddish and ruddy, you know, and have this quality. Mm. Right. And it says that if a person is someone who is going to uh, in take pleasure in the in blood, mm. right, he could be a murderer. Mm. Right, mm. murderer takes pleasure in the blood of others. Mm. Right, he could be a kosher butcher. Right? Mm -hmm. Do his job. Yeah, Do eat can. the animal. Mm -hmm. right? He could be a moil or a surgeon. Right? Mm -hmm. He could be saving lives mm -hmm. through blood. Mm -hmm. right? Saving neshamas, a moil, mm -hmm. causes a person to bleed. Mm -hmm. right? These are all individuals who have to be comfortable with blood. Mm -hmm. Me? I'm not comfortable with blood. Mm -hmm. No, you right? I'm not, it's not something like, something like, okay, you know, go check the cow. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't want to portray it as something evil, yeah. right? It's a necessity and it's the best way to kill an animal. Yeah. Right? It's just that I'm not a shokha, mm -hmm. right? And I, by the way, I know shokha to a very kind people. Mm -hmm. well, I like this story yeah. you're talking with the big guy, the Russian guy. Who yeah. was going to the airport? You remember? Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was yeah. A, ritualistic a friend killer. Who, who said, "I'm a ritual killer." Mm. To security, right? Yeah. English was not his first language. Yeah. He's a Russian guy. He had well, knives. He, he had, you know, knives from his jaw. A, a shofar carries with him, you know, perfectly They're sharp pristine knives. They're perfect. They, they, they can't be have a little they mark. They can't on even it. have a little tiny nick in. Yeah. Right? It won't be like allowed. Perfect razor in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, he, and, and a shochet never lets the knives out of his sight. It's the it's whole tools, yeah. right? By the way, a shochet goes to the mikveh every morning before he starts his work. Mm -hmm. Right? What's he doing? He's taking the life of God's creation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not something you do casually. Yeah, yeah. A shochet traditionally was the second most learned person in the community. Mm -hmm. First was the rab. Yeah, it's difficult, right? right? It's a whole big deal. The chazan, mm -hmm. who leads the services, was not the second. Mm -hmm. right? It was a shochet. Because wow. the responsibility of taking life wow. is so great mm -hmm. that it's not something, you know, okay, I'm going to work to kill some animals, mm -hmm. right? It's like, Hashem, you know, this is what I have to do, mm -hmm. right, for my community, right? I'll do it in accordance with your law, mm -hmm. right? And I'll have in mind that I'm doing the mitzvah, mm -hmm. but I'm doing it, right? It's a very, very serious been there. But there he was going through security and uh, <laughs> had his knives in his case with them. Mm -hmm. And they said, could you open up your case, sir? And he said, yeah, let me open up the case. <laughs> this, this isn't recently. This is no, like years in ago. the 70s. Oh, okay, okay. You know, years ago. And, and they looked at the knives and said, uh, can you please step into that room? <laughs> uh, and we'll take this. Yeah. And he said, uh, you have to bring it with me. Right? I can't let it on my side. And I said, so exactly, uh, what do you think you're doing? Mm -hmm. And he was, he didn't really understand what the issue was mm -hmm. uh, at the time. And they said, what do you do with this? And he said, oh, I'm a ritual killer. <laughs> a ritualistic killer. Yeah. A ritual killer. A ritual, a ritual killer. A ritual killer. <laughs> Which is a description of a shaka. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, he, he kills animals mm -hmm. following the ritual of mm -hmm. Jewish slaughter. Mm -hmm. right? 
But his English is broken, so he doesn't know how to say the right mm-hmm. thing, right? And it took a little while for it all to be straightened out. Yeah, yeah. In the end, it was all straightened out. <laughs> like, at least they're killing you didn't get on that fight. Didn't get that fight. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, though. <laughs> but, so, anyway, it's a, it's a side right? but mm. the point that I'm making, the point in Roshoka's story, mm. the point of the different kinds of jobs a person who mm. is involved with what can have, mm. from murderer to moil, mm. right? And in between, you know, a butcher, right? Is that the Torah tells us, mm-hmm. Rav Hirsch tells us, and the Torah tells us, there is a place for hatred, mm. right? But it's very narrow, mm. right? It's not you're hating somebody because they've done something that offends you. It's not you're hating somebody because you don't like the way they look at you. And we have all these problems. Mm-hmm. It's not a casual thing. I know I have them sometimes. Mm. Right? That, you know, something irritates me about a person. Mm. You know, I knew one guy, I saw him day after day, and I spoke to him. And just the way he behaved really irritated me. <laughs> like I really got to dislike him. I never exchanged a word with the guy. Mm. Didn't like the way he davened, I didn't like the way he moved around. And I, I, more and more, I was like, mm. this guy is <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I said, I don't know what it was. I said one day, I said, this is bizarre. <laughs> this is bizarre. You know, yeah. It's why, wrong. Why, yeah, yeah. why you ate him for no reason? And I invited the guy for Shabbos. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I said, hi, I'm David Ostrich. Would you like to come for Shabbos? He said, yeah, thank you. Right? Mm-hmm. And we became good friends. Wow. Right? wow. You know, he's a terrifically nice guy. Wow. You know, his family's nice, his wife is nice, his kids are nice, mm-hmm. you know, everything. But it just shows you, like, mm-hmm. how it can get out of hand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, but there is a place, right? Mm-hmm. And the place is where the sin and the person have become one. Mm. Right? Sin and the person have become one. Amalek, mm. right? He that is that sin from Amalek. One of the definitions of Amalek mm. is that he will harm himself to hate Jews. Well, Hitler did that. He was losing yes. the war and made the trains carry more mm-hmm. Jews. Mm-hmm. That's right. He could have right. helped his own but war it's, machine. It's, it's, it's mm. very hard to say this is Amalek and that's not Amalek. Mm-hmm. You, know, the, you know, we have this People always say, is that an Amalek? Mm. But one of the indications of Amalek, right, mm-hmm. is that his hatred is so great, mm-hmm. his evil is so great, that he's willing to harm himself mm-hmm. in order to hurt a Jew. Mm-hmm. Right? Because a Jew is, in his eyes, the light of Torah, which mm-hmm. a Jew should be. Mm-hmm. Right? And he can't live with that. Mm-hmm. Right? So that, that, that's a sign of Amalek. So we're allowed to hate somebody who has become the Avera. Mm-hmm. But that's, you know, it's, it may be in your whole life you'll never meet such a person. That's a very mm. narrow uh, It may be in your whole thing. life, you know, God willing, you'll never meet such a person. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because, you know, we know that one of the, the descriptions in the 13 uh, Midas of Rahman, mm-hmm. 13 uh, that's the character traits of, 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 no, not 13 oh, principles of Rambam, okay. but uh, we say it over and over during the high holidays, right? Hashem, Hashem. Uh, this quality, one of them is that God is long suffering and waits. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's a lesson for us mm-hmm. is that if there's a possibility that the person can turn from whatever the evil is that he's doing, mm-hmm. right, then we, we should hope for it. Mm-hmm. You know, that, uh, Rabbi Mayer had evil neighbors and he began to pray that the neighbors would die. And his wife, Greer, heard it and said, stop that. He said, I can't believe with these people. They're evil. And she said, Davin, that they should no longer be evil. Mm-hmm. Don't Davin, that they should die. Mm-hmm. You know, Davin, they shouldn't be evil mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. So, you know, it, you have to, you know, and Rabbi Mayer was at a much higher level than we'll ever be, mm-hmm. I suspect, you know, or than I will ever be, anyway, maybe not you guys, but me. Right? He could feel this. Right? Mm-hmm. So, the Torah says there is a place for hatred, but we should know that it's very possible that we may never encounter such a mm. place, and we hope that we never encounter such wow. a place. It doesn't mean that you don't practice self-defense. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't believe in turning the other cheek. Mm-hmm. You know, we believe, you know, if somebody's coming to kill you, kill, kill them, them first. first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? The road mm-hmm. It's one of the issues which we'll talk about in much greater detail about what happens when you know that the fetus is going to kill the mother, Mm. right? You know, is that a place where abortion is appropriate, right? 
I don't want to get into that conversation now. We will get into it at a future date, right? But that is a per place where a being is coming to kill another being, mm -hmm. right? So do we view that being as a road day for that situation mm -hmm. and spare the mother, mm -hmm. right? Where you have to make that decision, right? It's a very complex issue and a very deep moral question, you know, at that point. Uh, but we believe that you don't turn the other cheek. We believe that you defend yourself. Um, you defend your life, you know. Um, but by the way, all these things don't necessarily involve hatred. Mm -hmm. You know, self-defense is not necessarily involve hatred. Mm -hmm. It just no, means making sure you're not hatred. wounded. Mm -hmm. You, know, yeah, you want to protect yourself. Or protect your but the idea of hatred itself is when a person has become the avera itself. Mm. We should never know of it, and I'm happy to say that next week mm -hmm. we're Love. turning to Ahava. Mm -hmm. Love. 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 Okay. Okay. It's a nice kid. So. Uh,